Welcome to the February 27th, 2023 Advance Report for McGowan Group clients and NetworthRadio.com listeners. Thank you for tuning in. I am Spencer McGowan, your financial weatherman. I'm also President, McGowan Group Asset Management. This is a team of 10. You can see the results of our research weekly. That's our devotion to helping our clients make great decisions in the year ahead. So be sure to subscribe. And if you hit the like button, we like that too. We're glad that you're here. And I'm going to give you a fast paced tour of the global financial markets. What a week. There was a Valentine's Day peak in the Dow. And that was the 14th of February. Since then, it looks like a Valentine's Day massacre. Whoa, look at this. It's a 1700 point peak to drop draw off in just 10 days. What happened? Where did the rally go? Well, part of this is deja vu from last year. You're getting ready for the Federal Reserve meeting in March and the signs of inflation are sticky. So that sell off is very typical of what we saw all last year. How do we use that to advantage? We add bargains. That's what we do when we have a nice downdraft. When we have the high point of the year, which hopefully is a lot higher, and I'll cover some predictions there too. Um, when we get high points, we raise tactical safety. And now that T-bills on a six month are just above 5%, that's a good place for tactical safety, which we do automatically in our model portfolios for our clients. Right now, we're focused on how do you make it through a sticky situation? This is the S&P 500. The Dow, by the way, is down one and a half percent after that downdraft, one and a half percent for the year. S&P is still up two to three percent after the downdraft as well. But it, of course, they followed, they followed suit. Now, the S&P 500, we have a prediction that started the week. Tuesday was the first trading day because of the holiday. And Morgan Stanley came out and said some horrible things about the equity markets. Mike Wilson over there uh, prognosticated that things could be down as much as 20%. Then we have Jim Paulson who made a fortune in the 2008 collapse. What does he say? He says S&P 500 likely to be 5,000 at some point this year. Wow, that's a big range, a minus 20 or a plus 25. And Jim Paulson actually got it right in the 2008 crisis, made a bunch of money in the mortgage collapse. So he's a good prognosticator and that's what he said about this year. I think the extremes will be less than that uh, during the year, but this was a wake up call. Where did the rally go? Well, inflation, was high enough. This is the personal consumption expenditure index that hit on Friday. And that was a, a Friday sell off that was there po nearly it was 0.57%. So that would still annualize at close to 6% saying inflation is sticky. And it says the Federal Reserve may go to five and a quarter in their March meeting based upon what the T bills did. But let me cover something about inflation that's really important. Back in 2011, big inflation predictions, and there was a newsletter writer that came out with all these ads that said the end of America, picture of a lady with the wheelbarrow in Germany, you know, to buy a loaf of bread, and hyperinflation was his premise. Well, I went ahead and subscribed to the newsletter. What do you do if there's going to be massive inflation? And he used end of America as part of his uh, tagline for the website. Well, that sounds pretty bad. So I get the newsletter. What has he got? He's got a bunch of great dividend companies like Walmart and a bunch of pipelines. And it did pretty well. But his marketing was disingenuine. What do you do about inflation? Well, the newsletter writer was correct, as, as were we. If you're going to have inflation, equity in great companies with rising dividends is your best inflation hedge. Wow. And an energy focus. I'll cover some more about that as we go. But 
Anyway, that's going to be a little stickier. Fed's likely to go to five and a quarter, stay there. That's what the market built in this week. And it gives us an opportunity to what? Well, to get to record income from dividends and interest and plan our exit points to restore tactical safety at high points in the future. All right, this is S&P 500 earnings. So we've been through the earnings season, fourth quarter announcements. What's the net result? Overall, S&P earnings were down 3%. Not a disaster and not as bad as the predictions from other people, but it was a minus three. Why wasn't it down more? Energy, 57%. The oil and gas companies uh, actually showed increases in profits over last year, 57%, a record with distance. Also notable, 36% increase in industrial earnings and consumer discretionary holding in there just fine, up 15%. That's a wow. And real estate doing okay, 6.95% increase over the prior year. Now, here's the forecast for S&P earnings. This is the fourth quarter, and then it's predicted to come down a little bit more, but still way above the $50 per quarter level for the S&P. What does that mean? Well, that means a pause in equity activity, yeah, and, and we're seeing it now. But it's a great chance to add some good bargains, I believe. Now, Real GDP, quarter over quarter, 2.7 last quarter. This quarter projected at 0.4. But I'm going to show you something about this quarter from the most accurate predictor who said fourth quarter last year would be pretty good. And it was. Then we get, this is Bloomberg, by the way, the consensus of the learned analyst. They, they think a half a percent real GDP decrease after subtracting inflation and a minus 0.2. That would be a mild recession, second quarter, third quarter, and then growth picks back up from there. But what's the real story on the current quarter? Not 0.4. This is repeating exactly what happened last quarter. Atlanta Fed measures it every single week and they update it sometimes twice a week. What is economic growth right now? It's two and a half percent. What did all the economists say? See two and a half right here. And the economists were saying a mild recession. Their consensus was actually below zero, an actual contraction. And in the fourth quarter, Atlanta Fed had the right answer. So don't be too pessimistic and pick out some good bargains. I'm Spencer McGowan, President McGowan Group Wealth Management. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in to Net Worth Media today and our efforts over the past two decades to educate clients and help clients make great decisions. That's the reason that we're here at YouTube McGowan Group, Apple Podcasts, Net Worth Radio, and NetWorthRadio.com. The Net Worth Media effort is designed to help you make great decisions and address value at risk of loss, fluctuation in the markets. Remember, if we talk about a security, doesn't make it a recommendation until you come down and get a plan from McGowan Group Asset Management, the team that cares. You can set a Zoom meeting or an in-office meeting at the Crescent, and we'll give you a written plan that encompasses what we believe to be the best allocations. This is a team of 10 devoted to you. That includes the research that you see each week from Reuters, from Bloomberg, and from the best sources. We always post links at networthradio.com for what we believe can help you make great decisions, the research that comes up. Now, the Net Worth Media effort is also designed to address cycles in the market, value at risk of loss. At networthradio.com, you can get the ADV form that shows, yes, we're a fiduciary, a registered investment advisor. It covers the costs of hiring our team to help you in the future ahead. It really helps to have an expert team on your side that you can reach by phone, email, and of course, a team that's here for you every week to address what's going on in the markets because anxiety can often lead investors to make decisions 
that are either dangerous, chasing things, or selling things when they shouldn't. And that's a big part of our planning effort at McGowan Group Asset Management. Thank you for tuning in, and we look forward to serving you and your family in the years ahead.